Hello and welcome to the Squid Nation. I'm your host, the Squid God, and I'm joined once again by the beautiful Evil Queen. Hi. It's a beautiful nickname, I know, but she loves it to death. She's sticking her Hi. tongue out at me. <laughs> so, so today we're going to be talking about the um, Silver Age in our um, Disney retrospect. Last time we covered the Golden Age and the Wartime Era, and today we're going to be going on to the um, Silver Age Era. So, what did you think of this um, era as a whole? In general, I thought it was pretty good. Do you think it was an improvement over the Golden Age? Or yeah. Say over, yeah. yeah. I, I think this one was, I found a lot of um, films I like previously didn't like and then grew to like, like yeah, re-watching same. these. So uh, for those who don't know, say after the wartime era, um, the Disney company went back into um, making full-time um, feature films. Some of these which were literally um, made straight afterwards and were dropped and meant to be the Golden Age eras, but were um, moved aside. I think the biggest example of that would be, was uh, Lady and the Tramp, off the top of my head. Yeah. Fact check me on that. That's not a hundred percent. This is just off the top of my head because yeah. I think it was on the extras where uh, Walt's daughter um like opened the film on the Blu-ray. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember that. But yeah, let's get these in er- in order. Um, this um era contains um a lot of fan favorites: uh, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Lady in the Tramp, Sleeping Beauty, Sword in the Stone, and The Jungle Book. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I always thought this was a um, pretty solid lineup. I think when I was a kid, this is what like classic Disney meant to me. Yeah. Because to me, it was just oh, mum, look, it's classic Disney. You know, Cinderella and that lot. That's how I always viewed it as. Yeah. It's a bit pathetic, I know, but you know, leave me alone. Say, so, uh, did you did you have any strong opinions of this era? Or? No, I remember it being one of the ones that I watched pretty often. Considering me and you went to the same school and we were in the same classes, like this is the, this is normally the era they always showed it, like when it yeah. was raining, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right, so, so um, so did you have a favourite of this era? Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, same as mine. So one of the best Disney princess films, yeah. by the way. Yeah, it was Sleeping Beauty. Uh, and a least favourite, did you have? Sword in the Stone. Right, I know, I know, Sword in the Stone has its fans, yeah. but it bores me to death. Yeah, I can. I, I get why people would like it. It just wasn't really for me. I, I thought like most of the film was pointless. If I'm being honest, <laughs> it's like you had the opening. He turns into animals with that lot for half of it, and then bam, sort of the stone plot actually happened. But then again, I think I need to emphasise. I'm not a big King Arthur fan. Yeah. Like I think the most King Arthur thing I've ever been into was Sonic and the Black Knight, and that's very worrying. <laughs> when the Wii game is what you're most into. <laughs> but yeah, if you like it, fair enough. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll go through um, these. Um, uh, this uh, this used to be a controversial one for you. I'm not sure if it still is. But um, starting this era off was um, Cinderella. What was your opinion on Cinderella, going back to that? I liked it. I remember thinking it was overrated. I always liked it, but I thought it was a bit overrated at one point. I remember before you rewatched it, like you had a pre-phase of just like really not liking Cinderella. <laughs> I think it was just because... Like, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know why. Do you, do you think it was because a lot of people gave Cinderella a lot of credit when they were like ignoring other princesses? And there's just so many Cinderella films. Yeah, that's a separate rant. I'll, I'll, <laughs> like, one day, like if we ever do a Cinderella retrospective, which I'm praying not, but oh my god, there are way too many. And Cinderella story films, not just... Yeah, reboot sequels. But you are excited for the upcoming musical. Yeah. Which is saying that has probably dated this already, but you know. Ah, well, sod it. But yeah, Cinderella, say, say any highlights from that that you think, like? From Cinderella? Yeah, Cinderella. There's so many good moments in it, looking back. So, uh, the iconic dress change. Bibbidi bobbidi boop. Yeah. Say, would you say that was the best, like, segment of the film? Yeah, that and where she's running from the ball. Yeah, I think my favourite, believe it or not, is uh, the climax with Lady Tremaine. Because yeah. I think Tremaine is such a good villain that gets she overlooked. Is. Like, on all the t-shirts, you get all the witches and everything on there, and there's always me going, why is, like, Tremaine... Why is Cruella there, but not Tremaine? I quite like Tremaine, yeah, all right? Yeah, I like Tremaine. She was, a, she was a pretty good villain. Do you think, that like, the film has any, like, specific lows? Mm. Um, not... I think my I... main problem is there's a lot more... Ci- there's a lot more mice than there are Cinderella. Yeah, I think that's just the comedy part of it. Yeah, but I think this was a, a case of it went a bit too far for me. Yeah. But that's a personal preference. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, next, um, Alice in Wonderland. 
Oh, I struggled to watch this one. Yeah, because like so not because the Blu-ray player just wasn't having it. Yeah. So um, I think like from memory, I remember Alice in Wonderland being okay. Yeah, I, from what I remember, it was kind of you to like it. Mm. I think I think it's got some good scenes and some like very memorable characters. It's very bright and pretty as well. <clears throat> but I do think right, Cinderella. Uh, no, Cinderella. Um, Alice in Wonderland um suffers from the same problem Peter Pan does. As in every modern version of it is just the dark and twisted version. Yeah. And that that's a little trend that's like bugged me forever. But now oh, well, what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> but what we what you get, I think is fine. Yeah. It's got some good scenes, like um I think my favourite bit is actually the opening though. You know, when she's stuck in the hot in, in the hole and she's gotta get through the door. Yeah, I like the bit where she cries in the waterfall. Yeah, thing. that was part of that. Yeah. Oh that dear, I wish I didn't cry so them. much. <laughs> I think, I, think, I think that's another thing as well. I know it was, like, part of the time, but I think, like, the overly British Alice. No, but there would have been. Yeah, I know. I know it was because of that era, but... All right, great, Sully, after a <laughs> while. But I think that was the biggest low for me, unfortunately. But, hey, I like Mad Hatter before they m started milking him as the main character. Yeah. And the Queen of Arts was pretty funny. Yeah, the pure anger. <laughs> yeah. I think as well, it's, it's very jarring going back to, because it is literally, it, it's got the book's intention very well, as in it's just a madhouse. Yeah. And there's no kinetic energy, and I kind of, like, respect that in an essence. Yeah, definitely. So, do you have any, like, strong opinions on it? Not strong, strong. Like, like I said, we didn't get to watch it properly because of it, but... Yeah. This is all from memory. So, okay, uh, the next one. A childhood favourite of yours, Peter Pan. Yeah, child child's brought up with Peter Pan. So your mother is obsessed with Peter Pan yeah. and still is to this day. So did you have uh, any strong versions of the um, cartoon? Because I know me and you, we had the um, we grew up with the two thousand and three one. I I remember it being the one I watched least out of the two. Mm. But I remember liking bits in each, like different parts. Yeah. Like how to explain? Like I liked some bits in the cartoon more than the live action. And I liked some parts in the live action more than the cartoon. I do think, like, I know it's, like, if you wanted a serious, like, version of him, this wouldn't have done well, but I, I, I've always loved, um, Captain Hook in the cartoon. Yeah. I don't know why, like, he has such a good, like, I know it, it feels more Looney Tunes than it does Disney, granted, yeah. but it really works. It's just any scene with Captain Hook and Smee, just any, just all that kinetic energy, all, like, the fast pace and, like, when he's defying gravity and just rushing on the water. Yeah, with the croc. With the crocodile, when he gets slammed through the, like, rock formation, that is great. Um, I do think the film, say, and even Peter Pan himself, I think he's characterised quite well. Yeah, I do. And Tinkerbell's a lot more violent than you would expect. Like, she's a little terrorist, little she is. <laughs> what do you mean feisty thing? She, like, casually tries to get away with murder several times. <laughs> and just, like, happily nods away with this. <laughs> and I think it's more bizarre, because recently we watched the uh, Tinkerbell films, and you go back to that, you're like, no, she was a terrorist. You just wanted to shoot everyone. You're going to wonder why we're watching Tinkerbell <laughs> I think my only pr my only problem with um, Peter Pan again was like the modern versions. It's all the yes, Peter Pan's all dark and twisted. Yeah, he, yeah. and um, it, it's not the film's fault, but it's more culture's fault. Yeah, damn you all. Right, but um, it was more um, like the kids don't have anything to do in it. Well, other than Wendy, kind of. Yeah. Say so, and um, oh my God, the Native Americans. That is not yeah, aged well, not. especially the song. But yeah, that's all I've really got to say about Peter Pan. It's a yeah. fun time, and I'd recommend it to anyone. Definitely. Although the most underrated character is definitely Mr. Darling. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, he's brilliant. So, um, but yeah, that was Peter. Um, this was one I, I quite enjoyed going back to, considering I didn't like it for the longest time. Uh, Lady and the Tramp. Yeah. I was not expecting to like no, that as I much as I did. I I'm was pleasantly surprised with Lady and the Tramp. I remember I had a phase of going Lady and the Tramp was rubbish. We were threading it when we got to it, weren't we? Yeah, but no, it was quite it solid was... in the end. It was it. Say so it, it wasn't the strong, strongest written thing. Like the side characters definitely needed a bit yeah. of work, but Lady and Tramp themselves, I think, are written so solid. And that f finale is quite memorable. You know, when it's like dark and flashing, and the chick was it the rat? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was tr that was trying to get the kid. Yeah. That was really good. And I think Lady herself as well being challenged was quite a um, good part of the film. Definitely. But yeah, like especially like considering it was early Disney as well in that era. Yeah. I ain't got m much negative to say about it other than no. the side characters are a bit 
and mm. it's nice to know that some of it's like from Walt Disney's like pers- like his real yeah, life it's like it was based on him and his wife wasn't it the, the couple at first wasn't yeah it? and it was ba- wasn't it based on the dogs he got as well yeah because he got a dog as a present I think was it his daughter he got it or daughter I can't remember what it was specifically but yeah I know there's a connection there yeah god we need to watch this again <laughs> not in a marathon sense just casually god <laughs> we can't do this in a marathon again but yeah, so other than the side characters, um, yeah, the Lady and the Tramp is pretty solid, and my god, I will get you to eat those meatballs with me the same way they do one day. You watch <laughs> it happen at Tony's. We'll see. Well, we'll have to. <laughs> so, what was after Lady... Uh, oh yeah, my favourite one in this era, um, Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. To me, I look at Cinderella, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty as like this like un- unlisted trilogy, and I think Sleeping Beauty, you can fight with me on this, but I think it's the best film out of the lot. Yeah. And it's one of the most hated as well, wasn't it? At the time. Well, no, it bombed. It bombed. That was bombed the main bombed. reason. Yeah. It bombed at the box office. But, I, oh, that winds me up so much. I think it's one of the better ones. Yeah. Definitely. Like I say, I absolutely love the music. I lo- love it. I know, but I love how as well. It's a Dis- it, it's the Disney princess movie, but it's like out of the classic ones. It's the one with the most style to it. Yeah. Like, if you take a picture from Sleeping Beauty and you just post out of context, you know it's from Sleeping Beauty. And like even the side character designs all have that little funky two D aspect to them. Yeah, and the sharpness. Yeah, and even that, and as well, you've got to give it this. It does have one of the best villains as well, Maleficent. Maleficent. Yes. Maleficent to me is what defied a Disney villain. Like that was the stamp. Like I think the the evil queen. It's she laid the groundwork, but um, Maleficent perfected it. Yeah. Well. Yes. Yeah, you can disagree with me on that. <laughs> for... I like both of them. I, I know you. Li- I know you like the Evil Queen for uh, Once Upon a Time specifically. Yeah. But I think that a lot of what made Regina g- good in that show was because of classic Maleficent. Yeah, she was very similar to Maleficent in all this. And Maleficent, that is like the ultimate classic Disney villain design as well. Yeah. Which green fire, green skin, dragon, dragon. <laughs> oh, I love that dragon. Say, so, I think my only little complaint with the film is we get a bit too much time with the fairies. But yeah. even then, it don't bother me. No, I like the fairies. I, I like the them like looking after Aurora. And... Mm. It's slapstick, but it's like not too in your face slapstick. And I think like a lot of people go, "Well, um, Sleeping Beauty is not in the film a lot." And I've got, and I, there's me who goes, "I think she gets enough though." Yeah, she gets a song and. Yeah, she gets a song. She gets a good relationship that develops. Yeah, more than Snow and Perkins, yeah. I think. And again, people forget as well, she's not asleep for the most of the film. It's only the last, like, what, ten minutes she's asleep yeah. for it. And that final battle as well is pretty great. You know, escaping the castle, all the set, all the, like, little scenes. You get to see the um, fairies do their part. You get to see Philip take on Maleficent, which is probably one of the best Disney climaxes yeah, ever. Definitely. You know, that last shot, you know, when it's in the burning, like, thorn forest and he throws the sword at Male- Maleficent. That is brilliant. That yeah, is pure. Definitely. Yeah. That is pure, like, fantasy golden. I don't even like fantasy that much <laughs> overall, so. But yeah, Sleeping Beauty, literally nearly perfect. So, uh, going back, to, so, do you have any final comments on Sleeping Beauty? Uh, no, not only what we've said, really. It's damn good and everyone should yeah. watch it. <laughs> okay, next, um, going back down, I don't know if this is a controversial pick, but um, not a big fan of this, uh, 101 Dalmatians. I didn't mind it. Well, I didn't hate it, and I didn't love it. I, I thought the first half was a lot stronger than the yeah, second it's half. It's when the, the actual puppies come into it. Yeah. I think Pongo and his owner, and uh, oh, what was her name as well, the wife? Anita? And he, yeah. I think their relationship was great. Yeah. They were, yeah. And the dog relationship was great. And Cruella is... Amazing. L- Cruella is literally the me- the most... Like in that second half, she's the only reason you're worth watch sticking to the end. Anybody would think you like the villains. Hmm, what gave them that <laughs> idea? Cough, Darth Vader was the best cough. What? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, does, other than Cruella for the second half, I, like, if you're into the cute puppy stuff, I, I think the second half of 101, I think the main thing that bugs me is it's the only part of the film that feels like a kid's film. Yeah. Not a movie, it don't feel like a film, it feels like a kid's film specifically. Yeah. Which is weird, because I think the best Disney films are the ones that can feel like a film for anyone. But the second half of it is just, oh no, it's just for kids. Oh, here's cute puppies. Oh, here's animals rescuing other animals. Yeah, I get what you mean. But yeah. Wasn't a massive fan of this one, I'm yeah, afraid. Yeah, but I think it's hard to watch again. Yeah, I could watch again, but I don't get why this was the franchise that Disney at one point tried milking. 
Yeah. And again, outdating this again, are trying to again with Cruella. Yeah. I'll save my thoughts on that for the live action marathon yeah, we talk. To, we can't talk about that too soon. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Anyway, um, any other comments on 101? No, I think we've covered it all. Other than people are going to kill me for not calling it 101 and calling it yeah. 101. <laughs> Why are you doing that? I don't know, it's just how I read it. <laughs> I read it first to say less. I was just constantly thinking that. I was waiting for you to bring it up. <laughs> it's wound someone up, alright? I'm happy. I swear to God, if this if this video gets like a hundred dislikes just because of I said what I want, yeah. Well, it, it represents me in real life, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, moving on to my least favorite of this era, Sword in the Stone. Well, our least favorite. Well, our least favorite, <laughs> communism. All right. Sword in the Stone. Oh dear. Really don't like this one. No. I mean, Merlin's all right. The fight with Merlin and Mim. Yeah, but you know, like Merlin right. Mim. But, right, the thing, right, but the thing is with that, right, is, <laughs> so I'm, I'm annoyed, I'm already annoyed, right, because, right, it could have saved itself if it was Arthur. If Arthur was the one who had to take on Mim, right, it would have been fine. Because that means him turning into all these animals would have been justified in some way, other than just calling it traded and not actually being traded. Right, but no, instead we've got Merlin taking on Mim, so now it's just a wizard versus a witch. And yeah, it's funny, but at the same time, this entire film was pointless then. The, the only, like, significant thing other than the final fight and the ending is, um... I remember you crying at one peak bit, and that was I don't about know it. why. You, you, you cried at when the squirrel got... Uh, squirrel rejected the other... Rejected, well, Arthur rejected the squirrel, that was it. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know what that was about. Something's growing, you feel sorry for it. <laughs> God. Give me like a sad love story and I just weep. <laughs> sad love story? It, I, the guy was just trying to rub away from the squirrel. She was minding his own business. <laughs> she didn't, it was a squirrel. She had some nuts already, you know, she didn't need that. <laughs> God. But yeah, did not like Sword of the Stone. I, I just. I don't get why it exists, if I'm being completely I honest. Look at me the way that squirrel looked at her. <laughs> Oh, we really draw parallels. <laughs> I think we should move on before this gets personal. <laughs> you are not worthy of the sword in the stone. No! Or the nuts in the bone. Oh, that does not work. I don't know what squirrels talk about. Right, and the final film for this era, just so this don't get weirder. <laughs> um, I would, I'm going to talk about uh, Jungle Book. Yeah. What do you think of Jungle Book? I like Jungle Book. I, I, I do have some bias there, considering it's Jungle Book was, my, was one of my childhoods. It's not my favourite. I like Jungle but Book. I like it. Yeah, but there's one thing you can't deny with Jungle Book. God, the tunes are great. Great. Everyone, lo everyone loves Bare Necessities. Everyone loves Be Like You. Even the minor songs I love. You know, like the um, the Vulture songs and like trust Elephant March. Yeah, Trust in Me. I, I, just, I like the Jungle Book. I like the style of it as well. Yeah. I don't know. I like. like I think it was the Indian um, Jungle, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I, re I really like the aesthetic of it. I like the characters. I think they're all bumbly and memorable. Not too deep. I think the um, live action one actually improved that, and I'm going to get killed for that one as well. But we'll get to that. But yeah, say, re say really clumsy plot, but hey, uh, good mu good animation and good music. I think it holds up pretty yeah, well definitely. overall. I don't really have anything else to say about Jungle yeah. Book other than I enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. How do you think this um? Era holds up then, the Silver Age. I really like this era. I do as well. I think it's because yeah. there's a lot of childhood associated yeah. with it. Yeah, and like ones that we watched a lot as kids. I don't know why it was this era specifically, but... We were just moving out of VHS to DVD, of course we had this stuff. It was easy to part, I assume. <laughs> but yeah, did say, um... But yeah, how do you think it holds up uh, next to the Golden Age? Um... Golden Age? Yeah, I think it, yeah, I think it improves on it a bit. Yeah, I can say I think the Golden Age, like on its own, like animation terms, stands a little bit better. But I think there's a lot of it, films in this in this era I'd rather watch over it. Yeah. Like other than um 101 and Sword and Stone and well basically As in Wonderland, Cinderella 101 and uh, Sword in the Stone. Like I'd watch other than them, you know, I'd watch the other lot over that over the Golden Age completely. Yeah. Might get killed for that, but anyway. But yeah, that was my thought on the Silver Age. Do you have any um, closing comments? No. So, I mean, so, yep, yeah, I guess that's a wrap then. Yep, yeah, thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, or eat a bagel. I don't know. <laughs> I don't control your life. Lunch. Yes, it's going to be a different lunch every time. <laughs> lunch a bagel.
you know, whatever. Yep, so thank you for watching and uh, so have a good night. Bye-bye.